Welcome, everybody. Welcome to the Entrepreneurial Web, episode 101. We just did 100 last week. Going to kick it off hot with the message from the one and only Ric Flair. If you want to be the man, you got to beat the man. If you don't like it, learn to love it. Woo! You got to unmute yourself. Poha, this guy, after a year of doing podcasts, he still does not know how to unmute himself. Welcoming back to the show today, baby, baby Ric Flair, my little brother, the one and only Jacob Fox, the Hal Cobol. Yeah, I lost my punchline there as well. With the, uh, <laughs> damn it, we're off to a great start. One on one, you got to beat the man. You got to. You first, you always have to learn to beat the podcast. So he was on a, a little over a year ago. We was talking some bullshit, and uh, it turned into a weekly show that we do on Instagram Live now called the Zorro brothers podcast not to be confused with podcasts because it's it's as odd as our household was growing up um if lots, not more if not more lots of hick flair references and uh lots of uh homages to the uh uncle hanach the one uncle we was never see who has not paid child support um <laughs> if you don't know who these people are look them up uh get your um English to Portuguese English translator out. You're going to need it for this one. It was going to get a lot worse as the one Dave Chappelle would say. Um, anyway, so we started after our last, after our, our last show here on the entrepreneurial web started uh, doing a weekly Instagram live uh, on Sundays uh, centering around uh, misappropriation of uh, popular Brazilian culture, uh, mixed martial arts, martial arts. We've had on some pro fighters. We've had on retired Marines and other military. Uh, Jacob has shown his guns and dressed up. Uh, he's got a pinch hat for festive hats. So if you're a hat person, it's a good show to watch. We usually do it at 2.15 Eastern Standard Time on Instagram Live, but every now and then, because one of us uh, was busy, he was uh, shooting his guns or I was running businesses. Um, we go at 9.15 PM Eastern Standard Time, but mainly 2.15 Eastern Standard Time on Instagram Live. We will recap that at the end. My first question for you, Poha, is after one year now of doing the show, besides starting to feel some of the things that I feel regularly, like that comes along with the fame of just being a famous podcast host, how, how has your life changed since uh, doing the podcast? Yeah. Oh man. I'm going to, I'm going to do this entire show. This is going to be like the LinkedIn version of Jacob, whereas that's my Instagram or maybe even Tinder. Um, so I'm, I'm yeah, I'm going to be going without the Hanato um, all day today on the on the show. I'm going to leave the shtick completely out. Are you um, on your you on your company internet? Is that the problem? <laughs> yeah, no, um, I am in my I am in my office. So I mean, dude, I'm literally I just got up from my from my desk and and came over to to get some sunlight, uh, did a little bronzing. Um, but man, it's you know what the craziest thing I've noticed about the show is people watch it. <laughs> it's, it's crazy. I was, it, it, it's, it started out. It's so funny. I look back at the at the first one. I watched our first show on here, uh, maybe about a month ago, and it was it was a good show. And then I watched our first show where I'm in the gi out back, yeah. and I've got like I've got no music. We just we weren't really set up for anything. The video starts, and I'm like like it's you know it's stuck on a picture when the video starts, and it's literally got me like wiping snot from my nose, and it's. <laughs> That's just how the show started. And, you know, like you said, now we've got, we've had pro MMA fighters and jiu-jitsu black belts and school owners, and everybody's like excited to get on the show, uh, world champions. Um, and then, yeah, I'm really excited for, for Dom this weekend because I've never been able to pick a white belt's brain. I, yeah. It happens so fast jiu-jitsu. Like I can't really go back to what it was like being a white belt. Like it just, it's time, you know, it just absolutely flies. And especially on the mat, you know, you're, you're just rolling around, you're scrambling. It's like going through a tornado. Um, I'd be really interested to get his, his perspective on some things this coming Sunday, but um, no, man, it's been, it's been awesome. It's, it's, it's a lot of fun. It's definitely something I look forward to and my wife does not look forward to um, I know that every feeling. Tuesday. Yeah. She's like, she's like, can you do it any other time of day? Like you got to do it right at two fifteen, So we can't really go out anywhere before we can't do a nice brunch. Um, we can't do anything really after it just sucks up right in the middle of the day. Um, and she's like, then you make me go to the bedroom so you can sit in some various part of the house and show something off some stupid hat or something like that. Uh, so she's probably the, the, well, I've got a couple of them, but she's probably the one that is the least big fan. Um, 
Do you have uh, a couple? Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I had a, I've had a couple couple direct messages, a couple of Chappelle's. Got, it, um, got, our, got about, our first troll. Yeah, I mean, um, so it's it's definitely come a long way. Oh man, I didn't even think about it. That guy, if he sees he's because he said he's like, I'm a fan of Jeremiah's other show, but I'm not a fan of your show on Sunday. And that guy goes on here and sees this. Oh man, he's, his little world's gonna be in. You should have had a suit and chai for today. Yeah, yeah, for sure. But I did have the bottle of water as instead <laughs> right. of uh, some silly beer or Woodford Reserve. Yeah. Um, well, I can tell you, I, I can I can speak to the white belt feeling again after starting MMA just three weeks ago because Paul, you was feel like a white belt all over again. Like I we might have I might have mentioned it on our show. I know I've said it to a bunch of people recently, but. I, I can remember clearly like my first few live rounds as a white belt and the guy sinks the gets on my back and sleep sinks the arm around my neck and he's setting up the sleeper hold. And, and besides like, this is a guy I know, I know he's not going to hurt me. This is a classroom in a controlled setting. All I have to do is tap and I get out, but like deep in the recesses of the human brain, you're like, fuck, like I'm getting choked and there's absolutely nothing I can do about it. And it's such a helpless, helpless feeling. And I remember like, that was my fuel for like, I'm going to get good at this because that's an awful feeling. That's just like one of the most terrible feelings. It was akin to like losing a business. You know, you're just like, fuck, like I cannot survive. And um, I trained for six years straight, no breaks, through injuries, everything, studied striking, studied <laughs> rat wrestling. <laughs> you did that. You most certainly did not. Aura. <laughs> um, <laughs> and uh and, and, and some judo and all these things. And I felt like equipped now, like I could handle like myself on a street and you go in an MMA class. And even after everything, I've, I've been a striking instructor, all the things that I teach and you get discombobulated and you start getting cracked. You start letting your hands drift from your body. And all of a sudden you're getting punched and kicked in the head repeatedly. And, and it's that feeling all over again, that helpless fucking feeling like, God, like if I got in a street fight right now and a guy just like outmaneuvered me, I would be, I would be knocked out on the floor after all that training, I would just be like knocked out. And that's like, it became again, the fuel for like, okay, I'm going to go in and if nothing, I'm just going to keep my hands up. If I deliver no strikes, but I don't let my hands drift from my face, that's, a, that's one box checked off. And like, you get to start over like that way. And it's, it's been good. It sucks at first but it's, it's, it's helped me focus. Keep a couple of things in mind. I went through the same thing. I went through it when I started wrestling in middle school, like just got smoked. And I'm looking at a guy, I'm like, look at my arms and I'm looking at his arms and my arms are bigger than his arms. And my legs are bigger than his legs. And I'm stronger than him. I don't know why he feels stronger than me. Like, I don't know why I'm losing. You can't figure it out. And then you start getting a little bit better. And then you remember those first couple of times where you start catching people and, and hitting techniques. And then, boy, it'll get to that point where you are that guy. Yeah. Where I'm like, I've got you in a crucifix, and you can't even blink. Like, you can't even move your little fingers. I've just got you completely trapped. Um, and I went through it again in jiu-jitsu, and then a third time with MMA. But right. you made an interesting point, because you're in this sample size where all you're dealing with mm. is martial artists, um, skilled martial artists. And it sounds like martial artists that might be a little bit more skilled than you, <laughs> um, is, is you can still take on, you know, I don't know, 98% of the untrained world. Yeah. Uh, but the untrained world isn't coming into the gym. So your sample size is the savages. So don't, <laughs> well, don't beat yourself up too much. The funny part is just outside of this school, like Midtown West right now is like a fucking war zone. It's crazy. It's like, maybe not the 80s, but like, like the 90s again, there's just like garbage everywhere. Every other storefront is closed down. Graffiti homeless encampments and like you're just trying to get the school without getting into a fight so you can go play fight like we've all talked about it it's like, <laughs> it's like so crazy now that i don't even like look over my shoulder when i hear the sounds anymore i just know like it's time to cross the street i don't even have to look and see if that's a crazy person coming up behind me i know it is i'm just gonna like cross the street and there's construction everywhere so i like meander through these little barricades and stuff like that just to create a little separation so just get me to the front door so I can go play fight. I don't want to hear. Yeah, I was going to say, it's funny what that you, the way you say that, like, if you look at this from a 30,000 foot perspective, it's like, hold on, hold on. I'm terrified to fight some 120 pound crackhead that's never trained a day oh, in their yes. life 
<laughs> I'm mortified of that. But man, I can't wait to get to the school to, to fight this college wrestler slash like, jiu-jitsu black belt. That like pro, totally yeah. Smoke me. Exactly. Controlled. Con- what do they call uh, low consequence environment? That's yeah. what that's what I call the dojo. Like it's there's consequences. It's just lower than what you're gonna find on the street. You wear them on your ear. Yeah, I do. Uh, man, I got it on the nose, on the ear. I even have a little uh, gouge on. Dude, I'm gonna have to do a Google search way. if it goes away. My my, because I haven't trained in so many years. It's been like five years. I feel like my cauliflower ear is like Thanos's hand, um, where it's like turning to dust. It's like my my cauliflower ear knows that I don't train anymore. <laughs> And the jujitsu slash wrestling slash MMA gods are like, you don't deserve that ear anymore. Oh, snap. It's just going to disappear. That would yeah. Be um, <laughs> <laughs> the other thing is what MMA has forced me to do as well. And we will get back, folks, to the subject at hand after our first break. We just had to get this out of our system. Um, <laughs> You know, I, I was, my, I know my wrestling has been garbage and, and we're taught, you know, it, it's just like, you know, jujitsu guys doing judo, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like the throws just aren't the same. The guys don't make the same commitments. It's not, you know, not doing the level changes. You don't have the hip placement often. And it's kind of the sloppy uh, representation, but you can get a guy to the ground still, you know, using lapel. The Gracie secrets. style. <laughs> right. So it looks, so I, I learned like that Gracie wrestling too. Um, but now I'm working with a bunch of wrestlers and um, I was like nervous to wrestle. I was nervous to start from my feet in a Nogi class because these guys were so good. And I know they were going to put me on my back and I knew like it was just going to go downhill from there. And you get thrown into MMA and you have to wrestle and you have to defend strikes. So like wrestling becomes the least of your concerns and you're getting cracked and they still take you down to the ground. And then they start to crack you down there. And then I go into Nogi again and they're like, start from your feet. And I'm like, <laughs> you can't punch me. <laughs> so now I don't give a shit. I'm like, all right, let's wrestle. And not for nothing, like it's gotten better. You know, it's still, it's still got a long way to go, but I'm less concerned. Although this guy did like, this guy foot swept me the other day. And it was funny because like, he's like a, a younger dude and he's got that wrestler build and uh, you know, you know, neck and big traps and a little bit smaller than me. And we, we train a lot. And I'm like a little bit better than in jujitsu than him. So I can control the situation. We were starting from the feet. We got down to the ground three or four times. And I always just, once we got down to the ground, I dominated, like kept getting him in leg locks and stuff like that. And so finally, after like three or four submissions, I was just like, all right, I'm going to let this guy have his way with me for a minute. It was towards the end of the round. And this motherfucker launched me. I was not prepared. And you know, when you hit the ground and you make that involuntary sound, like it just comes out of your body. Sometimes it's a it's a grunt and a fart. Sometimes it's just a grunt. Well, I hit and I, <laughs> and I grunted and he just stopped. And he was like, are you okay? And I was like, you better take top position or I'm going to turn into you like real quick. But I, oh, I hit the ground hard. I walked funny for the rest of the day. Well, it's not funny. It's funny but, when guys yeah. do that. They're like, are you okay? I'm like, dude, you just hit me with the earth. Yes. Either, yeah, either, you know, grab me right now or I will retaliate. Right, exactly. Defend, you defend it. yourself. Shots have been fired. Things are yeah. in motion that cannot be undone. I will engage you in, in hand-to-hand combat at this point. Yeah, exactly. I was like, you better move fast because I'm not going to lay on my side for too long. But right now I'm hurt, so I'm going to lay here for a second. And foot sweeps are demoralizing. Oh, God, it was awful. Yeah, no control over my hips. Just push my shoulder back, foot sweep, hit the, I mean, level in the air. Made a big thud. You know, everybody looked. I was like, yeah. Oh, that's the worst. That was the old man hitting the ground. That was okay. I was just going to lay here. I, I was falling. Can't get up. <laughs> Need a life alert. Yeah. Anyways, I hit the buzzer. I hit the little thing. The, the paramedics came and saved me. And uh, <laughs> with that, we're going to take our first break. I feel a little, uh, some relief now. I got that out of my <laughs> system. We come back. We will try to be a little more serious. See you in a minute, everybody. <laughs> All right, everybody, welcome back. Once again, the Entrepreneurial Web, episode 101. I cannot wait until I was to the point of the one Joe Hogan where he was have four digits episode. You always have to unmute again. Can't hear you. I would see you laugh, but I was not hearing your stuffs. Yeah, I didn't, no. I didn't say anything. Never an Instagram opportunity lost for you, man. You already, after the first segment, managed to go in there and post something on, on Instagram. So I, asked, <laughs> I got questions. I know you're the one usually asking questions. Go. One, where do where do y'all get these commercials? It's all in it's the just the station. I know. Yeah. yeah. They're, they're, <laughs> in, in, in 20 years, the entrepreneurial web is gonna be like, if you watched 
the Zorro Brothers Oddcast, you could be entitled to a settlement. Yeah, right. If you were if you were if you were emotionally damaged by that. My other question is, where did you get this song, this opening song with like every instrument in the orchestra just jamming you all at once? Okay, I give you one guess at that. <laughs> you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I wrote that uh, shit. I wrote that shit in grad school towards the end of my grad degree. And then we recorded it in New York in like 2007, maybe like 2007, 2008. And that was uh, the opening track on my, um, on my, my debut album, my debut uh, third space album. Nothing like insulting something. And then to realize you're insulting the creator of that we had this when i was the company that i worked for very we good had segue a, <laughs> right yeah we had a we had a sales approach um that we used that was it was rough around the edges in my opinion and when i came in i just brought the approach that my previous employer who is just a monster of a company has just thousands hundreds of thousands of deals that have molded this presentation into what it is and it's just phenomenal and i brought it to the company that i work for now and I was talking with this manager and he's a Greenville, South Carolina manager. And I'm just dumping on the previous presentation. I'm like, yeah, there's so many holes in this, that and they're asking all these crazy questions and just, I'm just bashing the hell out of it. And like 10 minutes into this, just tirade, the guy's like, Hey, by the way, I was like the most instrumental manager in building that presentation. And I was like, it's actually pretty good. When you think about it, there's, 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 some, there's some good parts to that. I was going to, I was thinking on your song, I was like, yeah, you know, I don't know how to spin that thing positive. It's still, I think it sounds pretty shitty, but it's my brother. So, damn. You know, and that, that you know, the, the title of this show officially is hashtag no filter. Um, that's what we're, that's what was going to go to YouTube and uh, MySpace and the whole world was going to see. <laughs> um, and and if if you don't give a shit, then it doesn't, it doesn't matter. Um, so good, you know, transition into the, the recent, uh, Dave Chappelle, uh, you know, debacle where he's just a creator. He makes shit up. He makes up jokes. He hacks everybody. Nobody's off limits. And he has, he doesn't have much of a filter. He will draw the line somewhere. He, he talks, did you watch the show? Did you watch the closer? Oh yeah. I've watched yeah. a lot of his stuff. Lately. No, no, but I his, mean... his recent one, the, the one that just came out. Yeah. You can't avoid it. It's all yeah. over. It's everywhere. So he's like, you know, he said at one point, he was like, even I knew I fucked up there. You know what I'm saying? So like he, does, <laughs> he does have a little bit of a, of a filter, but, um, you know, it's, he insulted just about everybody. And, you know, he, he really went after like a, 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 he cast a wide net and, you know, certain, certain groups were offended and certain groups you have heard no worse from like uh, white guys was not care. Cause we think that shit is funny. And even though the truth hurts, Sometimes uh, you just have to laugh, um, but you know, I I feel very much the same way, and I think especially, I mean, I, I definitely like I give slightly more shits with this show than I do the oddcast, but with the oddcast, like I really don't care. Um, so I've this, noticed. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Um, I, I've gotten slightly inappropriate here, but um, I, I, but I, at this point, I feel like I was do hundred episodes. I was I was famous. I was not hitched yet, but I was going to be <laughs> hitched and famous soon um that I, I i i just don't care but yeah it's like i i feel like if you're the creator you particularly have to have thick enough skin to be able to um just hear criticism from anybody and everybody like you're gonna find people i know this from opening a business and opening like creative small businesses that you are not going to attract everybody in fact you may turn a lot of people off and if you're okay with that, if your success is is measured by the the right things for you, then then you can be successful and just not care. You know, I mean, my restaurant turns a lot of people off. A lot of people do not want to eat duck or baby octopus or a lot of the things that we was have on the menu. And I do not have Miller Lite and a lot of that stuffs and was not have the Heineken. The, that was not have the Reineken. And um, if, if that's your bag, then don't come here. And I'm not upset by that. If you want to go to the place across the street or down the street, because they have those things, that's what you should do. I'm doing well enough here. We're profiting. We're making, you know, we're making enough money and I attract enough of the people. And I, you know, I've seen the negative reviews and people are, oh, they, they, you know, like, I don't care. 
I just don't care. So when you don't care, it was very, uh, was this great sense of liberation where I can go <laughs> into the world and feel free and run my hands through my hair and was not care. So I'll try to relate this to the, the, the my take <laughs> on this, to the, to the show. It's an entrepreneurial show. Um, I'm a salesman, a sales manager. Um, and I'll kind of give you my sales spin on this. So in sales, we experience rejection. And and I'll, I'll get into this in a second here. I don't want to go off on a rant because I can rant on sales stuff and just you, concept. You have five minutes until the next break. <laughs> All right. So I'll try to I'll try to make this a Reader's Digest version. So you're going to experience rejection. And the people that can experience the rejection and move on from it are the successful ones. So the, the number one reason that more sales aren't made in any industry is customers' fear their fear of making a bad buying decision. We've all made bad buying decisions. My goodness, I'll go have a lunch somewhere and I've never been before. My stomach is curdling and I've got to get back to the office or home within 15 minutes. Well, I just made a bad buying decision that I regret. And what ends up happening is when people go into conversations with salespeople, the bad buying decisions that they've made throughout their lives start to fester up from the subconscious. Uh, they remind themselves of the Buick that they bought that had an oil leak and the salesman didn't tell them. The timeshare that they bought that that didn't, you know, travel and exchange the way that they were told it was. Um, and salespeople have this stigma around them. Well, we as salespeople, we don't have a lot of control over that, but we do need to be aware that sometimes people want to buy on their terms because they've made bad decisions, buying decisions uh, in the past. Well, the number two reason that more sales aren't made in any line of work, cars, real estate, investments, you name it, is our fear as salespeople. And that's our fear of rejection. And it ties back to self-esteem. And I'll get to that in just a second. So I'll prove to you that this is true real quick. Let's say, Jeremiah, that you're a salesperson and you're selling, um, let's say you're selling your spirits to, to, to liquor stores, wine stores and such in New York. And let's say that your, your company hired a marketing firm and the marketing firm had made a route for you. And the route was so precise that these business owners are guaranteed to be in the business when you go and they're guaranteed to be ready to have a conversation and they have the qualifying credit to buy. If you had that list, it was so precise, it was only good for one day, would you have time for coffee breaks? Would I? Would Yeah. I, I would not take time for coffee breaks. Exactly. Would you have time for a sit-down lunch and any of these things? Well, of course, the answer is no. But here's the thing. The only difference between real life and that scenario with the marketing firm is rejection, is that rejection is inevitable and that you're going to experience it. And that's why more sales aren't made. More sales aren't made because we're not talking to enough people. The rejection bothers us because of our self-esteem. Things that you see like eating duck or whatever in a restaurant, people having that on their menu, it's because your self-esteem is low. The higher your self-esteem is, the more broad range, different ages, race, sex, gender, you name it, that you can make friends with. And, you'll, and the more rejection you can handle as well. You've already made up your mind that you feel good about yourself and no one else with an outside influence of rejection and telling you no to your offering, your proposition, which is, has nothing to do with you, can affect your self-esteem. So it becomes a one-way train where when you sell, people buy from people. They like you more. Your self-esteem goes up. You feel good about what you do. There's an old saying in sales. We say the best time to make a sale is right after making a sale. Of course it does because your self-esteem has been reaffirmed that you're good at what you do. That's why people do mantras. While on the other side of that, there is nothing that someone can say to me that's going to affect my self-esteem. And I guess to close this, you, we've all know people like this. People with low self-esteem, they can only make friends with people of a very even keel temperament. They can't make friends with people that are much older than them or much younger than them or come from a different walk of life, a different background, a different part of the world, um, different belief system, different religion. Those people will always struggle making friends with those types of people because their self-esteem is low. Same with the people that get bent out of shape over every little thing they see. Salespeople, we've got to take pride in not letting things bother you. You just got to keep it moving. That's why I'm, David Goggins' book is called Can't Hurt Me. Mm -hmm. So we, just, uh, you know, a, a couple of things about that. One of the things we were, yeah, I was talking about an MMA just yesterday, we, you know, in there with like some pro fighters, but some guys, not, we're not, we're never going to be, you know, fighters that way. We're never, you know, no intention of being pro. We're just doing this because it's fun. We like to get kicked and punched in the head. Um, and, and I was just saying at the end of the class, like the, the, the Every time you're in a bad position in an MMA class, they were like, get up, just get up. Like it's always get up. You're in the bottom of closed guard, get up. You're in the bottom of turtle, get up. You're up against fence, get them off. Be able to stand up and have your hands up. Um, and, and, you know, you hear it all the time. Like failure is inevitable. Like winning is not guaranteed. 
failure is like you are going to make mistakes you are going to blunder you're gonna fall how quickly you just get the fuck back up is really going to determine your success and you were saying like you're getting at the more people you talk to the higher your 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 potential for um for for getting a yes is so like if you you know you got 10 people that you want to talk and you 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 know you allocate i'm going to go see 10 people today how many sales will you likely get one two on if you're average but if you go see 20 and you're you're still average you'll probably make four or five and it, and the more successes as you said you get will lead you to an even higher number of successes and the other thing you're talking about marketing like right now we're doing no marketing because everything's all fucked up we're just like showing up every day but once you have that confidence in your shit and you market that confidence that's when i think you really kill it like not just marketing not just like oh hi xyz this is what we do like yeah no shit everybody knows that oh you're a restaurant you have food fuck that's crazy you know what i'm saying <laughs> like you have to really market your confidence like like this is what we do it's not about making food it's about this component of what we do and like wearing it here and then you attract like for me at least that's like i'm attracting the people that are i'm looking to attract the people that see that and want that uh it's more like lifestyle than anything else and that was happened when you become hitch and famous like well people um, like people that are like themselves or like how they want to be people forget right. that second part that it's not just people that are like you but people that are like how you want to be you want to be who you want to be that, that, that's the second portion of that is oftentimes forgotten when people say yeah. people like people that are like themselves people like people that are like themselves or like how they want to be yep exactly and, and that's think, why and think about how well go ahead i was gonna say that's why i was selling high profile stuff and think about with that, all that being said, how fragile someone must be if something on a menu, if they allow something on a menu to bother them, how weak and fragile that individual must be. Happens it's scary time. that that's the, that's, that's the world we live in. I mean, it's, it's like, our, keep it's like our sister, like our sister. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Four. Four. All right. Yeah, we're gonna I'm going to zip that. <laughs> we're going to take another break. We'll be back in a few, everybody. Hang tight. All right, everybody, welcome back. If you're just tuning in, The Entrepreneurial Web, episode 101. That's right. We cross the milestone and we're looking forward to like when we're the Joe Rogan 1633 episode here with my little brother, Jacob Fox. Uh, he's in North Carolina. He's a sales manager for who? Uh, well, we disclosed that. You've already said some stuff that I should probably leave it out. <laughs> okay. um, what, well, I'll say one of the one of the top ten largest home security and automation companies uh, nationwide. Um, number five in the residential uh, department, I guess you could say. Um, it's broken up into different different divisions and such. Um, but I, I consider myself a sales leader, not a sales manager. Okay. Because you can't you can't you literally cannot manage people. It's impossible to manage people. You can't you can only manage processes. And this is right. a big failure that, that, that managers do. They manage their processes and they don't lead and inspire their people. Um, if, you, if you make it about the processes, then you skip the people, but it's all about the people. You care about the people and the people can take care of the processes. You know, people talk about leaders and everyone, oh, I want to be a leader. I want to be in charge. You're not in charge. You're responsible for those in your charge. And being a leader, you got to be careful. It is a, you know, you're a servant as a leader, you're a servant to your people. And being a leader is, it's, it's like being a priest, man. It's a thankless job. You know, there's a, there's a lot you have to give up the, the selfishness that you really have to give up, um, avoiding negativity. You just, you cannot, you have to be a filter to avoid letting negativity get to your people from any various source, from the rejection, from price and promotional changes, industry changes, you name it. Um, so I don't consider myself a manager. In fact, I hardly manage anything. My people manage the day in and day out. Um, I manage my people. It's, if you've ever seen Simon Sinek stuff, I, I love Simon Sinek. He says he talks to some B or C level executive and they, uh, he says to them, you know, what, what's important to you? What, what, what drives you? And he puts his hands on his hips and he's proud. And he says, my customer. And Simon Sinek says, man, you haven't talked to a customer in 15 years. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> No, it's true. And, and I've experienced the same thing climbing from, you know, dishwasher to owner, you get to the top and then it just folds back down. And now you're, 
you're literally subservient to all your employees and all of your customers. Like you're not and in empathetic. Charge. And it, yeah, and you're not you're not in charge. I mean, it, the old saying like you know, uh, grant me the wisdom to control the things that I can and know to you know how to recognize the things that I can't. And people are like like I have children. You can't control. <laughs> you have right. no control. Like you're if you're a parent, you need to get control of your child. You're out of your mind. I got a three year old that'll drop me to my knees in tears. It's just awful. So yeah, don't try to control the people, but the processes, you sound like Tony D over there for a minute, you know, like your processes, the, the controllable, the non-variable things, those like you, that's your holy grail. You know, that's your North star. You got your book and you walk around with that. That shit is in, that is chiseled in like the Chin commandments. And, uh, I, and let the, let that be, you know, your leadership. Yeah. And Tony D, I mean, he looks like he's, there's kind of, there's, there's, there's levels in what I get to my, what I consider the final stage of, of leadership being fulfillment. You know, there's, there's money and then there's pride and there's all these things as you build to success and people want to be successful, but a step above successful is fulfilled. And I can't tell you if, if Tony has gotten too fulfilled yet, but I can tell you that Tony has definitely gotten too to successful and he i mean by, by all means i'm sure he feels quite fulfilled when he looks back um and all the hard work and, and everything that he's put into building just what i every time i go back to virginia beach they're bigger yeah. um the the empire that he's built and it's because of doing things like caring about your people um really caring not oh yeah pat you on the back how's little whatever i mean really genuinely caring about your people and putting them before yourself um and people get when they when they hear the leaders, they think managers. They think that to be a leader, you have to be a manager. But leadership is 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 it's full circle. It's encompassing. So meaning you can lead laterally. I can lead other people of my equal rank. I don't manage them, but I can lead them. And then there's the weak, the absolute weakest type of. And Jocko Willing talks about this um, in Extreme Ownership. The weakest type of leadership is positional leadership. Positional leadership is do this because I told you to. Right. That is the number. You can't think of any re better reason for someone to do something for their own good, perhaps, than because you told them to, because you're ahead of them in rank. That's the reason. That's the best that we can come up with. And that's getting into managing. But the, my opinion, the strongest form of leadership is those that can lead up. Those that, that people above them say, that was really good. I can implement that in my leadership style. And it, it's leadership doesn't, there's no rank and file in leadership. It's you can, anyone can be a leader and grow themselves into being a more powerful leader. Here's one for you. You know what, what oftentimes people don't think of when it comes to leadership? Curiosity. Leaders need to be curious. Mm -hmm. a, curi a curious leader will empower their people. If, any, if anybody out there is listening and they are constantly answering questions, you're becoming a human dictionary and you're keeping your people from being able to think on their own and developing skills that are going to allow them to think in real time. When I say a leader is curious, let's say one of my reps calls me and says, um, hey, uh, you know, I'm dealing with a customer right now. Um, how much is this outdoor camera? Well, if we're depending on if it's an urgent situation, I'm, I'll give them the answer. But if not, I'll say, hey, have you had a look at the promotion? I'm curious. Have you had a look at the promotion? Because it's in there. Well, now next time I don't get that call because they're thinking, Oh, he's going to tell me I need to look at the promotion. And the more, and I don't mean curious, like, hey, why haven't you worked harder? Curiosity with meaning, with substance, um, will encourage your people to be able to think on their own and develop themselves, perhaps into leaders as well. Um, many times, not something that often comes to mind when it comes to leadership. Of course, the empathy, the positivity, the loyalty, there's a number of things, but real leaders are curious. Get curious about your people. Get curious what's going on in their personal lives. Get curious what their pain points are. Get curious about their, their work life. Just get curious. Ask questions. Um, not the first thing people think of, but it's a very powerful tool in leadership. And, and going back to what you were saying about Tony as well is, you know, demonstrating that curiosity. So for a guy like him, I don't think fulfillment is achievable because his vessel is so big, you know, <laughs> There's worse like, problems to have. Like the coochie. <laughs> that was. <laughs> uh, <laughs> he 
he's talking about Frank. He's talking about Frank Cucci, the guy that started exactly. Wings Academy, right? Exactly. So, you know, my old instructor used to say, if you get to a well, a water well, and your your vessel is too small, supply is not the issue, you know? And and Tony just like, he literally carries around like the biggest chalice, you know? He demonstrates that curiosity. And I think that's what's inspiring about him. He's hungry like a like a like a 15 year old uh, you know freshman wrestler who wants to be an NCAA, NCAA champ. Like still, he's that hungry. You know, when you talk to him and you hear his excitement and his passion, and he's he's still looking for all these things. And and he man, he put me on the spot so many times in his clubhouse room asking good good questions like that, and had me just like bumbling. And it was funny because like, it was shit that I knew, but when you're, you know, you're in this room, there's like 75 people. He's got you on as one of like the, the panelists, you know, you're one of the top guys up at the top. I know like maybe, you know, you're at work and you get engaged in something, but you still hear the conversation. He's like, Jeremiah, I got, oh, huh? <laughs> like, I wasn't paying attention or like, I, you know, I don't, I wasn't walking around committing those things. Like you said, like it's in the pamphlet, bro. Like it's things that we've gone over so many times. So it's funny because I flipped it on him and I had him back on the show. On this show is the second time on. And I had made notes finally over the course of a few weeks in the clubhouse room. Uh, what are his big questions? What does he ask everybody that we all fuck up on? And I turned it on him. I brought him on the show and I asked him those questions. So I got like the one-on-one -on -one in-depth answer and, uh, and it was recorded. So I could always go back and reference the ones and remember all that stuff's. Uh, but it, it it worked in terms of like it's sealing it in my brain and it sucks because he doesn't really do those rooms anymore and all people only remember the times that i was fuck up the answer and i didn't get a chance to redeem myself and and do it the high way that's good these people that are listening they're like why does he talk like that why why, why, why is he talking like that i don't understand the, the r's the h's and why is he wearing the silly shirt tune well, in tune into our sunday show and we'll make sense of it y'all Cultural misappropriation, hashtag no filter. There's a lot of things that are not appropriate about you. Hashtag never forget. All right. Um, we're going to take our last break and come back. And we will actually talk about podcasting for the last portion. <laughs> I promise. <laughs> Hang tight, everybody. We'll be right back. All right, everybody, wrapping it up as promised here with my brother, Jacob Fox. We, over a year ago, started an Instagram live. Woo! <laughs> the Zorro Brothers Oddcast. Uh, the name is complex. Uh oh, did we lose? Did we lose you? I think we lost him for a moment. Give him a moment to get back on. So we started this Instagram Live uh, as our main platform to distribute and um, air our our Oddcast. Uh, there's a number of different ways you can do it, but Instagram Live has a great functionality now. Uh, when we first started, you could only have two people on, but now you can have up to four people. So it's a very good free budget way to, uh, you've got to turn, you always have to turn yourself, there you go. Um, free way to get, uh, to get yourself up and running if you want to start a podcast or an podcast. Um, the only requirement for your guests is that they have an Instagram account uh, to join and they can hop right on and you can have up to four people at a time, which is really great. Uh, I don't believe Facebook offers that functionality yet or Twitter, LinkedIn possibly, um, but you got to like request to uh, be able to do live on LinkedIn, Instagram. You just get to do it. Just make sure you do the updates because we have a few guests that was come on and was not do the updates and it was not able to come on. Um, so we, you said something uh, very compelling at the beginning of the show when I asked about the podcast and you said people watch, people do watch. When do people watch? It's a live program, much like this one. When do most people watch? After the fact, because we can see how many people are watching in real time. But yes, like people will come. One. <laughs> yeah, but people will come. I mean, it's, it's baffling to me, the attention that we've gotten. They're like, you know, I've had people ask me like how much money we're making on it. Of course, we the iHeartRadio people approaching us and whatnot. Um, yeah, it's, it's super interesting to see that like you actually are getting traction. At the end of the day, I have fun with it either way. So, you know, it's right. It's not. It's not like like Hicks and Gracie says. If I if I fight you for uh, money, I'll stop when the referee tells me. If I fight you for honor, I'll stop when I want to. Right. Well, we we don't do this for money. We do it to have fun. So we'll stop it when we want to. 
Exactly. Exactly. Um, and it is true. Like, so we do the show on Instagram live. It posts to uh, Jacob's feed and then I copy it. I save it and I uh, post it to my Facebook page, which he gets to then share onto his Facebook profile. So then we start to get magnified uh, viewership from there. And I think we may probably get more views on Facebook when we post it there. And the other great thing about Facebook and LinkedIn is that you can, you can post long form video. I mean, like long form, sometimes it shows over an hour and Facebook and LinkedIn will put the whole thing up Instagram. You got to chop it up uh, into a bunch of the little segments. If you're going to do that sub 10 minutes, it's a pain in the ass. Um, Twitter only gives you like two hours, two, uh, two minutes and 20 seconds, something to that effect. So uh, TikTok is like 15 seconds. It's not going to work. Um, For little kids, man. Yeah. But, uh, but I cut it, I do cut it up uh, into small, I do cut it up into TikTok size, uh, bits for promotion. And what I've noticed from this show, especially now that I've been working, um, uh, with a, a company, I cannot he reveal who, uh, the mastermind is behind it just yet, but all will be known, uh, one day very soon. Um, I'm getting this show cut up into anywhere from 15 seconds to like more than two minute segments and bits and pieces and distributing that throughout, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, uh, LinkedIn, and TikTok. Um, and then you really get this magnified view where like maybe the show, you know, the, the, it go, the Facebook live video goes to the station's um, Facebook professional page. And, you know, sometimes we'll get like 50 to 100 or 200 views. The one Bobby Seeger was get over 300. The guy was kill it, but he was hitching famous. Um, you know, oftentimes though it doesn't that get that many views, but when you when you add up all the views from all the different channels, once I chop it up, then you've got like a meaty portion, uh, a meaty engagement. And then that's only the people that, you know, it's only what the algorithm is telling me that they see and you get the likes and everything. But then I get people stopping me all the time saying, there's one dude that I train with all the time. He never likes anything. He's never like commented or liked or anything on anything that I put out. And he was just telling me the other day, he's like, yo, my girl and I, we watch this shit all the time, man. And she was like, yo, is he famous? And he goes, he's about to be. And I was like, Corallo, you might be onto something. <laughs> His brother is. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's way ahead of you. I always, yeah, have more, right. I always have more hair. I always have better hash guards. I was going for the Don Janaher uh, style of fame. <laughs> right. Gi top and shorts. <laughs> but what's happening with the hash guards? Yeah, it's funny with with starting something like this, because I've had people that, have, that I've talked to over the past year, especially the last six months where the traction's kind of picked up. And they're like, yeah, you know, I've, I've thought about doing something like that. I'm just scared. You know, I, I thought I thought about doing something like that. I just, you know, I just don't know if it, if it wouldn't go well. Back to that confidence. It, yeah, well, I mean, in, in self-esteem, I don't care if it doesn't go well. I'm having fun, you know, and, and I say this to salespeople all the time. It gets back to rejection. When you go out in the field, when you prospect, when you start a show, what do you have? You have nothing. Mm -hmm. So you can't be scared to lose something that you don't have. Fear of failure, fear of failure can be just, it's, it's exorbitant. Fear of failure is just an incredibly powerful parasitic thing. Um, you just cannot walk through your life scared to fail. It's like right. you said earlier, it's, it's going to happen. I either win or I learn fail good get up and do it again get up. you know just got get your up. butt kicked good get up and it, it ties into anxiety and anxiety is a fear of the future it's a fear of what has not happened yet and it just it makes very little sense to me like every now and then i get a little anxious and i remind myself like yeah but nothing has happened yet i haven't lost nothing yet you know um and, I, and people tell me all the time too like my boy uh matt valenti trying to get him to come on last week and he was just like, I'm not confident. I'm like, all you have to do is talk and be as goofy as we are all the time, you know, like well, the hanging other, out the, together. The, and the other thing about that is, you know how I can, I can guarantee that you're not going to gain confidence if you keep saying, I'm not confident. <laughs> you know, people say seeing is believing, but it's the opposite. Believing is seeing. Mm -hmm. You will never see something into fruition if you don't believe it first. So as, as long as you keep saying, I mentioned mantras earlier. I'm a great salesman. This is, goes back to like Tony Robbins in the 80s and stuff. I like myself, right? All these old mantras. Well, I talked about this the last time I was on your radio show. The subconscious is what's taking that on. The subconscious doesn't have an opinion to say, 
well, maybe I like myself or maybe I don't. It simply accepts those things as opinions. And now it's going to give you the behaviors that are consistent with what you told yourself you are. And if you keep telling yourself, I'm not confident, I guarantee one thing's going to continue happening. You're not going to have confidence. You, you've got the people, the way we don't think about what we think about. And the, the things that go through our brains, if you allow them to, they can just eat you alive. Like, like the anxiety. I hear like, there's pills and medications that people take for what, what? It hasn't even come yet. How can you be scared? You don't even know. You could win the lottery. You could meet your soulmate like that day, that night. But if you're too anxious, you're two ships passing in the night. You're going to miss opportunities by thinking about something that you have no con- You talked about this earlier. I have absolutely no control over things other than building them in real time now, what's going to happen in the future. And that the sad part is you're not building out the things that you want for your future because it, they're, they're happening right now. And you're worried about that instead of being here in the present where you can affect what occurs in the future. Sad. It is. Um, you know, my, my old instructor also used to say the thing that you want to do the least is the thing that you need to do the most. Or like the one Hick Flair was saying, we said it at the chop. If you don't like it, learn to love it. Because it's the best thing going. That's what I was it's muted the for. Best thing going. <laughs> that, that's what he used to say. And I was muted when I said that was my punchline to start the show. And I was story of my life, dude. Muted myself right through it. Love it. We we got we got there. And 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 tying back into the MMA practice, and I said it on on the podcast. Like, I don't want to go. I dread it. I fucking hate it. Like, I'm like, I'm gonna get my ass whooped. This is gonna be awful. It's gonna be embarrassing. It's just like, it's beating my ego up, you know, it's beating like my, oh, I train, I'm tough, I, you know, and I, and I get in there and I'm like a rag doll, you know, but I'm forcing myself to go because every day I get just like a touch better. And I know that I will never get to that point if I don't do it. So I just like drag myself there as awful as it is. I'm on no sleep. Like everything's just a mess. And I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to do it anyways. And that's like, I think the most important thing, like really, if there's something that you want to get done and you're dreading it, like you need to just do it. You know, as long as it's like, I'm not talking about like, Hey, I want to be able to fly. So I'm going to jump off of like the golden gate bridge and just see if it happens. That's not what we was talking about. Um, so and used an interesting, you used an interesting word there, ego, you know, and, and I've, I, I, I kind of come from the school of hard knocks. I, I learned the benefits of hard work by not working hard and seeing, you know, that there's a, a lack of, of freedom that goes into a lack of discipline. Um, and of course, when you gain discipline, you gain freedom. Um, and it was the same with my ego. I used to, I mean, you know me, man. Um, I used to have this massive ego. Yeah. And, and I didn't understand until it came to a boiling point where I just wouldn't listen to people, how detrimental and, and just toxic the ego is. And especially we've talked a little bit about leadership today. For the aspiring leaders out there, checking that ego is like, it's a conscious effort. It's something you, you constantly got to be aware of. And it comes down to what we talked about being curious, being able to learn. If you just think you're right all the time and you think you're when, when something, even if you are, even if you are great, if you tell yourself you're great, then you won't listen to people um, that you're, that you're just too great. And you're above these things. Um, you stop growing. And as, as human beings, we've got to continue growing and learning from A to Z, from cradle to grave, we are learning living organisms. And you've, you've got to have your ego in check um, or you'll stop learning. And then that's, that's a slippery slope. That's a scary place. That's why everybody is so important that you always do the jujitsu because you always have to leave your ego at the door because you come in there all tough guy as a little uh, girl's going to put you down. They're going to put you on your <laughs> back and what's going to, well, that's what happened to me at least. Um, we know a thing or two because we've seen a thing or two. <laughs> yeah. Well, and I always, we got to wrap up. And I, you know, what you were just saying is like that, that you got to stay curious or like, look at it this way. What happens to the lion that doesn't hunt? Doesn't eat. Doesn't eat and he dies. Because nobody was going to, uh, he cannot, or do the grub hub. He does not have opposable <laughs> thumbs. Well, it's not going to work that way. Yeah. So I, I like curiosity to stay hungry, all those things. Um, you know, if you get knocked down, get up. Uh, and if you're afraid, go at it, go at it. Not like actually with the lion, but you know, be, be smart, be safe. Boy, go listen to uncle Hanach, um, and buy my DVDs and come to my seminar with that. Oh. We're going to have to sign off everybody. Once again, 
Zorro Brothers Oddcast, Sundays, 2.15 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Instagram Live. If you like what you see here or you just want to troll, you want to drag those guys on Twitter, which is not a heel place, um, <laughs> come bring all you love, bring all you hate. Uh, and my, my handle is Jacob Fox BB, and I don't know where you got your handle from, but Jeremiah, is it, is it the kids or something? No. What's another, it was a story for another time. They always have another show Sunday. that always have to come on. We're going to talk Sundays, <laughs> 2.15 Eastern Standard Time. We'll Instagram talk about your silly handle. <laughs> Bring your child support. <laughs> All right, everybody. <laughs> have a great weekend. <laughs> that was fun. We'll see you next week. Peace out. Mm -hmm.